Hello and welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us today. Our guest in studio today uh, noticed an important health care profession issue over the last several years that he says needs to be addressed, generational diversity. Our guest says that it can make or break an organization. He's a skilled health care leader with more than 30 years of experience in nursing leadership, clinical operations, and patient services. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, Christopher Martorella. Thank you, Neil. Good afternoon. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for joining us today. We hear quite a bit about diversity in the workplace, whether it's the healthcare field, uh, education, transportation. What is generational diversity? When we're talking about diversity, we're usually talking about racial or ethnic, maybe even um, uh, gender diversity. But what about generational diversity? Well, you're absolutely right, Neil. Uh, I think the, the uh, impetus of, of diversity came about uh, with issues of race. Um, and ethnicity. That's what people generally think about when they think about diversity. But really, diversity can take a variety of, uh, a variety of forms. As you've already mentioned, gender is one. Um, and then generational is, uh, is another. Uh, there has been no other time in uh, the history of the United States workforce where when four generations have been working side by side together. Uh, it's, as many people know, this is, uh, you know, the United States was an agrarian society prior to uh, big business starting. And so people were used to working with generations on the farm, mm -hmm. for instance, or in the home. But in terms of uh, working in industries and in factories and in offices of today, we've never had a situation like this where there's four generations working side by side. Now, we're not talking generations as in all of these people are necessarily related. We're talking um, age-wise, uh, correct? That's correct. You know, yes, we're talking about generational uh, generations when people were, uh, the generations to which they were born, for mm -hmm. instance. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we oftentimes hear about, uh, the veterans or the traditionalist group. Uh, those are those are uh, Tom Brokaw called them the greatest generation. Those are those are people who are generally born between 1922 and 1943. Following the the veterans group, we have the baby boomers uh, who who generally were born 1943 to 1960, and then we hear a lot about Generation Xers, uh, born 1960 to 1980, or the or the baby boomer, or baby busters, they're often called. And then the Generation Y is the, is the fourth one and the youngest uh, of the workers in our workplace, born 1980 to 2000. And these are gener usually called the Millennials or Generation Y. Okay. Okay. Now, you've been uh, interested in diversity in healthcare, not just generational diversity, but in diversity in general in healthcare throughout your career. Talk a little bit about your career and what was it that propelled you into this field? <laughs> Well, that's a great question, Neil. Um, well, as uh, as you introduce me, I, I am a nurse, and uh, if you can't tell by my voice, I am a male in nursing. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, I uh, started off my career in a in a very sex segregated profession. Mm -hmm. So, I, there there are actually no other uh, professions that are so segregated by sex besides nursing and the Marines. Believe it or not, Marines. Uh, being uh, 90 plus percent men, um, and that's the same uh, for nursing, except that uh, when I started nursing, about 7% of all nurses were males, uh, and now we've grown some, but certainly not enough. We're up to 10% uh, males in nursing, and, and that's what got me interested uh, in diversity, uh, that there were clearly uh, Venus and Mars ways of looking at patient care and about the practice of nursing that I discovered uh, early on in my career as a staff nurse and then an early uh, manager. Mm -hmm. And then I, I got very interested in uh, diversity uh, as, a, as a broader topic uh, when I worked uh, as a director of nursing in an academic medical center in Florida where uh, we were we really saw diversity as a, uh, as a business imperative. Mm -hmm. So once employees had their, you know, regular orientation, they then got uh, a, a four-hour course on uh, nothing but diversity and how to recognize what uh, some of our blinders were and then 
how to work uh, and incorporate uh, various diversities into uh, your workplace so that uh, it would certainly be more harmonious for <laughs> each of us to work in, mm -hmm. but also it's, uh, it's critical uh, for lots of other reasons as well. In your experience, when you're training your healthcare pros in diversity, as you said, immersing them in nothing but diversity for uh, so many hours, how much of a challenge is it to um, offer diversity information when many of these people have grown up in, as you say, different generational periods with different ideas about the younger generation? and the generation that may be older than them. It seems as though it's much more complex than simply racial or gender diversity. You have to run the entire gamut of ideas and outlooks on life. Um, that's exactly it. Uh, you know, when you look at someone, uh, you know, generally you can uh, determine race. Mm -hmm. uh, with a couple of questions, you may generally determine ethnicity. But you're right, it is difficult to look at somebody and say, now, geez, which generation did they come from? And that's one of the really interesting things about the, the, the tension and then the challenge about working with a, a diverse workforce. Um, the, the, the problem of, of, of these generations, the problem that you get into when these generations start colliding is that the problem is based in the economics uh, under which that person uh, grew up, mm -hmm. the demographics uh, that they were associated with uh, through their early life, and the worldviews that they and their cohort group um, believe uh, and, and what they experienced as they were growing up. And that, that, that pulled them together as a group. And then it kind of becomes a we them kind of a mentality of well we're all baby boomers for instance so we think this way and uh, we, therefore uh, other things cannot be correct or they cannot be right and so that's what a lot of times these uh, the the education for instance that I reference that I provided and what I look for in my engagements with uh, hospitals is how do we bring those groups together how do we leverage the strengths and perhaps minimize some of the opportunities for improvement to really bring together a team that is diverse, not only certainly in race and other kinds of things that are important from diversity, but also a generationally diverse team because there are benefits that come from that team. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, and our guest in studio, Mr. Christopher Martarella, is a skilled healthcare leader with more than 30 years of experience in nursing leadership, clinical operations, and patient services. Uh, he's been responsible for strategic planning, operational budgeting, business development, uh, clinical oversight in a wide variety of healthcare settings, served as a consultant and project manager, as I said, in uh, a wide range of engagements, including but not limited to nursing and other clinical departmental operations. He's been in studio with us discussing generational diversity. Never before have we here in the United States experienced a situation where four generations, age generations of folks are working side by side in industry. Understanding the differences between generations can make or break an organization. It's been great having you here with us today, Christopher. Thank you, Neil. Great to be here. Thank you. Transcripts and audio of this program are available at healthprofessionalradio.com.au and also at hpr.fm, and you can subscribe to this podcast on iTunes.